Hello everyone. We are going to be going through the lecture outline called Review of Normal Development through a series of three shorter video recordings, but you can just follow along. They'll go in sequence with your lecture outlines, and I've divided those into three videos. We're going to start with embryonic development, then we'll go to fetal development, and we'll finish up with postnatal development. So that will cover your review of normal development. So we'll start with the pre-embryonic period. So we're going to actually start back at conception. And the reason we're going through this information is because a lot of the conditions that we see in children in physical therapy are due to changes or problems that occurred during the developmental process. And I think it helps you understand the impairments and the problems that you're seeing if you understand where it came from. So you probably had this sometime in uh, middle school or high school biology. But basically, um, at conception, the sperm and the egg combine. That's how the organism gets a full complement of chromosomes. That's occurring out here at the end of the ovary. And then that takes about two weeks, maybe not quite that long, for the, um, for the, feed, for the embryo to move along. Let's see if I can get my, there we go. So to move along the fallopian tube, and then to finally come and implant into the lining of the uterus. So we have this ball of cells. So we have one cell, then of course it divides into two, then each of those cells divides again, so that gives you four. You can do the math. So we have this little rapidly dividing ball of cells that's moving along the fallopian tube and then finally implanting. And again, by two weeks after conception, um, that little ball of cells is implanted into the wall of the uterus and then that's what then at that point it's considered an embryo. So a lot of cell division, a lot of rapid cell division going on during this time. There can certainly be errors in cell division that occur and as I'm sure you're probably aware oftentimes um, miscarriages occur often without people even knowing that they're pregnant because of uh, problems that are occurring during cell division at this time. And then, ultimately, the uh, embryonic period is from about three weeks to eight weeks. And you can see here the embryo. A couple of things I'll point out is you can certainly see uh, the, this is the start of the brain, and we'll, we'll be looking at that a little bit. Um, spinal cord here, coming on down. Uh, you can certainly start to see some limb buds. You see the eye, of course the gut area and you see the lower extremity limbs. You see the uh, start of the umbilical cord here but we still see a big yolk sac here which is telling us that the embryo is really not getting a lot of nutrients yet from the mother because the placenta and the umbilical cord haven't really fully developed yet and so they're still getting a lot of that nutrients from the yolk sac. So again you see an embryo here and a, and a yolk sac and yet one more. We also see the amniotic sac. Right now there's a lot of room in there, so essentially the uh, embryo is, is floating in there. It's very temperature controlled. Obviously it's sound controlled. It's, it's, it's dark, it's warm. So that's the environment in which the embryo is developing. So we really have three basic cell layers that are developing. Initially, as that zygote becomes a blastocyte and these and those cells are rapidly developing in the, even in the pre-embryonic period, we're going to start with two layers of cells, which is an upper and a lower layer. The upper layer of cells are called the ectoderm, and the lower layer of cells, the endoderm. And then finally in the middle here, we're going to get the mesoderm. Um, and the only reason I mention these is because these um, are what are called the stem cells. I know you've all heard of those. Basically, those cells are all alike. Remember, they started from one cell, which divided, which divided. Um, so those were exact replicas of each other. But at some point in the maturation process, those cells, cells start differentiating and ultimately will be doing very different functions. So the upper layer of cells, again, the ectoderm, is going to become skin and hair, and the inner ear and uh, large parts of the nervous system. The endoderm, the lower or inner layers of cells, are going to become a lot of the internal organs. 
And then the mesoderm is going to become a lot of the types of um, structures that we deal with, like the axial skeleton, the skeletal muscles, connective tissue, etc. So, um, again, during that period of differentiation and development, we could have errors occur that result in problems that will ultimately become developmental problems that we see in children. Uh, this is just a table. It just gives you the same thing. So I'm not going to ask you on an exam, you know, list three structures that arise from the mesoderm. I just want you conceptually to understand generally the developmental process. I mentioned the placenta before, and this is going to form during the embryonic period. And the, the placenta is just a series of membranes through which oxygen, um, nutrients, antibodies, pretty much anything that the fetus needs is going to be kind of uh, passing through to get into ultimately the um, umbilical artery and then t to the fetus. And then, of course, the waste products, carbon dioxide and other metabolites, are going to pass back through the umbilical vein and then through the placenta back to the mother. Now, recall, though, that there's not actually ever any mixing of the blood. So these substances certainly filter out and out of the blood and into the fetus, or into the embryo and ultimately into the fetus from the mother, but the blood itself doesn't mix. And we'll talk more about that with teratogens in just a minute. So we have here, again, just kind of more of a, a cutout view, a uh, little bit more relative size. Here's a close-up of the embryo, and there's that uh, yolk sac we talked about. Here's that amniotic sac as well, filled with amniotic fluid. And again, that's keeping constant uh, temperature, constant pressure. There's really very little, because of buoyancy, very little effect of gravity on the embryo. And it just creates that very protected environment for the embryo to develop. Um, so at this time, things are really small. Uh, the uterus is starting to develop and enlarge a little bit, but the um, embryo is taking up a pretty small, pretty small area at this point. So despite the small nature of everything, and l let me go back a couple slides here. I think this is a good one. Um, this really shows you that a lot of the body systems are, are rapidly developing during this time. So again, we're only talking about you know, up to eight weeks, so, or to the end of the eight, eighth week, and then that's going to be the pre-embryonic, and then up to three to eight weeks is the embryonic period. So within two months, essentially, all the major organ systems have developed. So the liver is really developed and functioning by the third week. Um, there's skin, as you can see, by the third week. Uh, the heart is beating definitely by the fifth week, maybe even by the fourth week. And again, you can see the brain and cranial nerves and the spinal cord are developing as well. So by the end of the eighth week, all the major organ systems are on board and are functioning. So that's pretty incredible. It's also a time of great risk for the embryo because since everything is in the process of development, it's very much at risk for problems to occur. And this is where the idea of teratogens comes in. So teratogen literally means um, creating a monster, which is kind of a scary scary way to think of it. But it's, it's anything, any agent, any item that could cause abnormal development to occur. And so I've listed a lot of examples for you. Um, some of those are viruses. So the cytomegalovirus, for one thing, can cause hearing loss. It can cause microcephaly, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute. Cognitive delay, visual defects, and problems with dentition. Uh, rubella, which is German measles, another virus, causes eye defects, can cause heart defects, hearing loss cognitive delay, and just generally can cause developmental delays in growth and development. Toxoplasmosis is a um, 
parasite that can get passed uh, through cat feces to humans, and this can cause prematurity, low birth weight, it can cause enlargement of the liver and spleen and other internal organs, and it can cause a lot of uh, visual and cognitive delays as well. So again, you have to think about all these organ systems are developing, and so these viruses are going to go in and, and they will radically disrupt that development. Uh, varicella, of course, is a herpes virus, and that can actually cause scarring of the skin in the, in the embryo. Um, limb defects, muscle and limb defects, again, a smaller head, even something as serious as blindness, seizures, and cognitive delay. You're probably all aware now, um, in the news, is the Zika virus, and that's just kind of blasted on the scene in the last couple of weeks. And this virus, it hasn't been firmly supported yet, but it, they very, very strongly suspect that it is responsible for causing microcephaly. So this is a picture of microcephaly. Basically, the head and the brain don't develop. Now, you can see the face looks relatively normal size, but the, the cranium portion and the brain do not develop. And so this um, tends to cause very significant developmental delays. I'm sure you're all aware that there are many chemicals that could, would be very dangerous for, uh, preg for exposure, for a pregnant women to get exposed to. So certainly alcohol, we know that there um, are a number of significant effects of alcohol on the, on the developing embryo and fetus. So growth retardation, cranial nervous system, a very small head. I'll show you some pictures um, when we talk about pediatric pathology of kids who have fetal alcohol syndrome, and you'll see a very characteristic changes to the development of the facial features, like um, a thin upper lip, kind of a, a small head, very small, close set ears, low set ears, things like that. Uh, nicotine, of course, there's, there's not any demonstrated safe level of nicotine while a woman is, is pregnant, so these, this can result in low birth weight and prematurity. Lithium, which is a medication people take for mental illness, can cause heart defects. Even something like a vitamin, which you'd think is healthy, but remember, uh, especially fat-soluble vitamins can reach toxic levels, and so this can cause cognitive delays, um, again, delay, or, um, deformities with facial and head development. People who need to take anti-seizure medication, that's very challenging because that can cause growth and cognitive delays. And probably not a big surprise to you, cocaine is not really good. It can cause a lot of problems as well, including developmental delays, but also um, infant drug withdrawal. So I know I've kind of gone on and on a little bit on this, but there are, are many, many... Um, chemicals, viruses, things that can interfere. But the reason it's so dangerous during the up to the three-week period is because that's a very, very busy time of growth and development for the embryo. And so the organ systems are most susceptible to disruption during the period that they're actually being developed. There are different categories, and I'm not going to, of course, hold you responsible for this, but um, some things we know are very, very dangerous, and those are absolutely contraindicated during pregnancy, and I think um, nicotine would be an example of this. Um, there are some, you know, we can go all the way to the other end where um, they don't show any risk at all, and kind of everything in between. So, um, just to share that with you. So this is a, a kind of an interesting graph. Uh, if you look, it's, it's pretty busy, but on the top it just shows you the age of the embryo which is in weeks and then it does go into the fetal period and it's trying to show you little pictures of different systems and things like that and also um, the pictures right along the top going horizontally starting here and coming over are showing you you know the size so here's that little ball of cells that we talked about the dividing cells and then you know we're starting to see more of an embryonic shape here um, between the third and the eighth week these bars here, these colored bars, um, show you when the organ systems are most at risk. So that's the red. 
So that's pretty consistent. Even if you don't look at any of the, of the words, you can see that a lot of the red is up before the eighth week. And then after the eighth week, there's a lot more yellow, which still means that there's some risk, but that the risk is much less. So if we look here, um, we're talking about central nervous system. That is at risk certainly all the way through the embryonic period and then even you know partway through the, the fetal period as well. Remember we said the heart starts beating by about five weeks, so that would make sense that the heart is at risk you know, up till about five or six weeks. Um, upper limb development, lower limb development, you can see up to about five or six weeks. Um, the eyes a little bit later, teeth and the palate a little bit later, external genitalia, and then ear development. So a lot of facial head development types of things as well as some of the internal organs. So this wraps up our, our talk about embryonic development and after this lecture then you'll be going on to the field development uh, video.